Hey guys, um, so today we are going to be talking about chickens and getting new chicks and the brooder setup and the costs, kind of. Um, I didn't cover everything that you're gonna need to purchase, like including the price of the chicks. That'll, you know, depend of course, wherever you get them. I'm gonna show you um, some ideas for a setup. I'm gonna take you shopping um, and answer whatever questions you guys have below. So. Um, I guess if you ask me any questions, uh, there's a need here. So, so here I am. So a couple of things that I know that I did not cover already. Um, when I do take you shopping, I did show you a product called Nutrigen, Nutri Drench. You're going to need to purchase that and have that on hand and give that to the chicks. Um, for about the first week of their life, you follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. Um, I think I usually do just one dropper full for the mason jar size that I have for their waterers and change that out every day. You do not have to offer supplemental water. That can just be their main source of water. Just make sure it's not sitting underneath the heat lamp to where it gets too hot and nasty and, and things like that. It's got a bunch of vitamins and things that they need for their first couple of days of life. Um, the... What else did I not cover? I don't know. Chickens. Chickens are lots of fun. Um, they are not um, like pets per se. And I know that a lot of people, I mean, like I view them as pets. How am I gonna, how should I say this? They're not to, when they're younger, when they're chicks for the first couple of weeks, they're not to be played with a whole lot. Um, especially with little ones, um, if you have little bitties, you need to definitely make sure that they are respecting this animal because it is a, it is a live animal. Um, they're not, they're not gifts to be had to little ones. It's like, oops, you know, they killed a chick and whatever. Chicks cannot regulate their body temperatures. And so they desperately rely on those heat lamps to do that for them. Um, and they will love you and they will cuddle you and they will hook, you know, but at the same time, if they're not staying warm on your child's lap or in the box that your child has put them in, they will just die. Um, so it's very important that you have a very watchful eye over these little helpless, you know, beings. Um, some things that I ran into this last go around uh, is my first time using the incubator. I you can purchase incubators. Uh, I did not talk about this at all. Um, I'm just assuming that you're buying your first chicks from a store or from a person like myself um, that does hatch them regularly. Um, I've lost my train of thought. Okay, so... Okay, I had to go back and like listen to what I was saying. So something that I did run into this go around using the incubator and not using a mother hen or purchasing them already from a store is that these chickens really struggled to eat. Um, they really struggled to eat. And we lost a couple of them. Uh, even even dipping their beaks in it and tapping on it and encouraging eating habits. I had to smush up their food into like almost a powder to get them to consume food. That's never happened before. I've done so many rounds of chicks before and I don't know what was going on there. So just watch them. You will notice um, a change in pitch when they are stressed out, when something is very wrong with them, you'll know that almost immediately. They start screaming. It's it's ear like piercing. Their their pitch goes up so high when they are cold or hot um, or hungry, and there's something very wrong with them. Just like an infant would be screaming, crying for help, you'll notice a difference between like the cute little chirps and then that cry for help. So something is wrong. Um, and it needs to be fixed. Some other things that you might encounter is rye neck. Um, I, I'm not a source for that. I've never dealt with that. There's some vitamins and things involved in that. I think I think that's why I do the nutrigen, just to make sure they're getting the nutrients that they need. I think pretty much um, when you get them from a store, you get them from a person after three or four days of life, all of the 
terrifying things that could happen um, have pretty much already happened. So you're getting healthy chickens. When they do get too cold, they can start getting pasty butt, which their poop starts piling up on their back end. And if you do not take care of that completely and regularly, often checking on them at least three times a day and clean their bottoms, what will happen is they will, um, they'll not be able to poop and then they will die. So there's, there's a lot of things and it's, I haven't experienced a lot of the, the terrifying things, you know, it's, it's been an over, overwhelmingly positive experience. Um, or I would have stopped doing it a long time ago. We did lose some chicks um, this last go round because I think they were starving. Um, they were also in the garage with the vehicle. And so my husband thinks it was like the fumes that really started getting to them. And we eventually moved them after we lost a couple of them. Just trying to put some pieces together. It's, it's not rocket science, but it, it is a learning curve. Um, we've lost some even that are, that have been mothered by hens. You know, we've woken up and gone to the barn and, and the chick just wasn't underneath the mom and had froze to death or seized. Um, we've lost a couple because of, because of seizures and things like that, that we've even gotten from the, the tractor supplies and, and they will replace those chicks. Um, I've never had a problem with that. You know, you get them home and then a couple of hours later, they're passing, they're passing away on you. And you're like, but I literally just bought this chicken. And I, um, they will replace those for you unless you become a habitual, like your children are killing them. And then they'll, they literally will put you like on a, on a no sell list. Um, so there's that. <laughs> so, um, I think that's everything that I, can think about sharing with you. So we're going to go outside and we're going to look at a couple of coop set, a couple of little brooder setups, um, a, a full brooder setup, and then another idea that I have for you. And then I'm going to take you shopping and then I'll come back to you and sit down and talk to you in the end of all of it. All right, let's go. Sorry, my chickens think that there's food. I guess they knew there is food. I just sent baby food down. Um, this is my go-to brooder that I use. I got it from Tractor Supply as well. This is a 2x4x2. Two by by two. Um, I don't know what you call it. I'm sorry. It's outside, like a water trough, I guess. Um, we did purchase it, though, for... We purchased um, these troughs. We have two of them for um, about $90 a couple of years ago. Um, they currently, I was at Tractor Supply um, shopping for you guys, and they currently are $180. So if you want one, I mean, they're incredible. They last forever. I'm trying to get out of the chicken coop area. Um, they last forever, and they're super easy to clean. And I'm going to show you the lids that we use for them, and I'm also about to show you another setup too. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. It's not $180 to start off with. Um, but I do like the metal coops because they keep it, they keep their temperature, I guess. They keep it warmer and stuff in there. Um, yeah, so let me flip this around and let me show you something else. I am so sorry for how dirty this is. Um, this is a thermometer. You're definitely going to want a, you're going to have to have a thermometer. It tells you exactly the temperature for the chickens and you make sure and you just hang it from a string you know right here by the heat lamp this is the heat lamp set up I've actually never gotten away with having it this close to the chickens I always put it up on a chair and secure it that way and that way we don't have any accidents at at all whatsoever um in the brooder area People um, use these things and they're terrified of them and they've started fires because they fall. Um, and make sure that you're changing your light bulbs every year just to prevent um, any, you know, light bulb breaking explosion. You never know what happens to them. So right here um, is just a, a tub that I got from Walmart, a 50 gallon tub. I probably around the $20 mark. I cannot remember how much this was. We did buy this, um, 
this season for babies that we just had. So just uh, 12 or so weeks ago. I think it's 15 to $20. I can't remember. Um, pine shavings. You get, I forgot to show you those at Church of Supply. Um, they're about six or so dollars for a big, huge thing of them. And um, you'll get away with just purchasing one uh, for your batch of babies for as long as they'll be in here. Because babies are so messy, um, I never really keep their food and water side by side. I always get um, like a two by six or two by eight or something and put underneath these. Um, here's my mason jar. I'll show you. We're going to go shopping together in a second and I'll show you how much these things cost. And I just use mason jars. Um, but you want to secure these. And I usually have the water away from the heat lamp the farthest away from the heat lamp so it doesn't get hot and the food closer to the heat lamp so they're not uh, making a giant mess it's not necessarily completely um necessary for chickens 100 percent for ducks but definitely not necessary for chickens to separate them i just i just prefer separating them um and then with the glass mason jars you do not want to keep them around um, I don't know, outside we've had some break when we have them around bigger chickens because they'll stand on them, they'll knock them down, and then we, we get around to broken mason jars. So make sure you secure those, make sure you're setting them on something. One of those like half, um, cement blocks would be awesome for these things if you can buy one of those from Lowe's or something. This is the lid that we made to fit the larger brooder. We made two of these. These pieces of wood were one by four by eight that my husband cut down and we just stapled them together. And then we purchased, I believe it's quarter inch hardware cloth. And then we just stapled that onto that um, to make a super easy lid to keep these babies in um, because they're going to start flying out um, to, I don't know, three or so weeks or whatever. Um, and we have cats, of course, so we need to keep the cats out of here as well. So whatever size tub you go and purchase, anything will do. Just a, the biggest one that they have at the store, um, you can go and you can measure and you can cut the wood to make the lid for that. I've also... I've also in the past cut the plastic lid out and try to staple um, hardware cloth to the plastic lid and that didn't really work so well. I was trying to save some money and make an extra lid, but um, it just didn't really work out for me so well. If you are personally hatching babies and they come straight out of the incubator into a brooder situation, puppy pads are like the best way to keep your stuff clean um, without the pine shavings. They really do not do well with pine shavings until they're about a week old, I've noticed. They just fall everywhere and they land on their back and then you're dealing with um, a possible situation where your chicks are gonna pass out and, and stop breathing and die because they're on their backs and they can't get flipped over. So the puppy pads were an incredible addition for for our setup when we have ones that are under a week old here it is all together you have your pine shavings your puppy badge your heat lamp with a brand new light bulb your feeder and waterer your lid to keep them from flying away they will i promise your thermometer that you can hang on the side your tote and of course i've got pine shavings in this already um, so let's go shopping and see how much all of this is going to cost. These are okay. Six dollars. They go with these. These get nasty really quick. These are the waterers I use. You can use mason jars instead of the plastic. Um, so you just buy the bases right here 
for four dollars. I'd recommend two. They also have these. I don't have these. It says it's for quail. Um, have one of these. Hate it. The chicks end up perching on it and pooping in the food. Hydro Hen. Read the instructions on the back. Never want to give this to them all by themselves. You always want to have fresh water also. And you never want to do it more than a couple days in a row. Um, this you want to have on hand at all times. Especially for the babies. You want to give it to them for the first week of life. Um, and a little bit more if you think that they are struggling. This helps. You need this at all times on your on your farm. It is $14.99. This is not that great. It says it burns people or it burns the birds and you can use Vaseline instead of that. Uh, let me see. You can keep that on hand. That's a good thing. Also this one, they do the same thing. Uh, you need at least one heat lamp. The lamp is $12.99. The bulbs are two in a box for $10.99. You'll need one of these. I don't see any bases right here at Charger Supply, but this is a five quart drinker. It looks like it is $10. And you can use this for chicks if your brooder is large enough to support it. Um, and then you can just put pebbles in the base of it. I'm not seeing the base. So this tractor supply is out of them. That's okay. This one is $13.99. It looks like it has legs to raise it up. I've never used these before. I always hang my waters or put them on a big um, cinder block. But that's a good idea also because they're going to kick stuff into it constantly and then you could put little pebbles and stuff in the bottom of that if you don't your chicks might drown all right they have this large bag of 20 percent chick starter grower do more we like this a lot um it's crumbles they're gonna need that that is 8.99 um the bigger bags however i have noticed tend to be really really broken up and they don't love that. It turns into powder. You do not want to give your regular chicks meat bird food. You do not want to give them corn. You do not want to give them scratch. Um, there's a specific purpose and you need to make sure that you're rubbing the right one for health wise, for health reasons. But chick grit is great. To have on hand if they're outside if they're inside your brooder setup they do not need crit but if you do start exposing them to the outside you'll need some of this and it is $7.99 it's just way smaller you can see that than the adult grit the adult grit um, is great for when they get older you never want to give your chickens egg layer feed until they are 18 weeks old or laying feet or laying eggs or it will totally ruin their body systems. Um, this is the bag that we get for my chickens. We do the non-GMO chick sort of grower. It's 18%. Um, it's just the right size. It is $5 a bag and I do get these smaller five pound bags because they're not um, broken like the larger bags are. They don't turn to powder. So there's that. And if you want to do organic feed, they have the organic. Uh, this is 19% chick starter grower. It's organic. Same same deal, but it is $9.50. I have not used this brand myself, but I've heard good things about it. Organic. And it is five pounds for $11. Okay, I just sold this. This is brand new. I've never seen this before. Um, price comparison wise, 
Um, it's cheaper than the little bitty bags, and it looks like it's actually taken care of and packaged well. It's organic um, chick starter crumbles, and I love the ingredients on the back of this bag. Um, and I love that you can see it. You can actually see it through, and it looks like it's not completely destroyed either. So that is Cluck & Co. While you may get distracted by the snacks that they offer, your little babies do not need snacks. And just to make sure, do not give them anything with omegas or anything like that in it, any laying supplements at all for um, your babies until they are laying because it can ruin their bodies. All right, some, some other things that I know that I did not cover um, was the heat plate that you can purchase. Um, you can get that from Tractor Supply and a couple more places like online. You can get them on Amazon. I'm going to link below, I can't because I cannot remember the name of the other um, supply house that you can get them from, sometimes cheaper. Sometimes you can't find them, especially in the spring. So if you're watching this and you're considering... Or you know you're going to start doing that next spring. You're going to wait through the winter. Go ahead and buy your supplies right now. Because when you hit the springtime, you're not going to be able to find any of these things. So those heat plates are great. Um, you don't have to mess with the heat lamp at that point And deal with the, the falling and the possible explosions and the possible fires and things that other people have had um, experienced. I personally have never experienced any of those things. We do change our light bulbs every season, every new like breeding season, if I do need those. Um, and another thing that I know that I did not mention was the, you don't keep them on chick food until they're 18 weeks old. You can, but it kind of gets expensive. So you just want to make sure that you're not transitioning them over to layer feed. You never want to give a not laying chicken layer feed. I know I've said that a couple of times here in this video. Um, there's a thing called all flock that I transitioned my chickens into. So about the time that they are like six to eight weeks old, I, unless they're with their mothers, if they're with their mothers, they're introduced to all flock immediately because I give the mom a choice what she wants to eat, all flock or the baby food. And typically she's eating the baby food because that's what she wants her babies to eat. And it is a higher protein and she did just pretty much starve herself for 21 days to hatch these babies. Um, but you do want to start transitioning them into a larger food. It's cheaper. It's, um, it's pretty much just cheaper because it's pretty much the same ingredients. And you get to control the protein level. Um, just do your research. I know I did not cover everything. That, this is not a comprehensive chicken guide by no means um a lot of research and stuff went into to my knowledge um ask a lot of questions get on some forums some facebook groups for chickens uh, just be wary of those because people are super dramatic and they all have their opinions but just read the backs of everything follow it perfectly all of the backs of these feed bags are going to tell you exactly when to move up and exactly when to change um, feed and what to do when. Um, I do give my roosters um, the layer feed when I do transition my entire flock to layer feed. However, honestly, we have not done that and I can't tell you how long um, because I constantly have new babies that are not laying. Um, so what we do in that case is you can feed back their eggshells to your chickens for calcium. And um, you can also buy oyster shells for calcium. But again, don't have that where the little ones can eat it. I've noticed that my roosters don't eat it. It's, it's kind of like God designed them to know what they needed. Um, and so they'll go find that. And of course, um, do the grit and things like that per size level of the bird. I know I've already said that. So I think, um, I think that's everything. If you have any questions, of course, let me know. Ask all the questions. I'll try to answer them. Hopefully, hopefully other people have more questions. I just ask that you guys do remain kind. Um, I want this to be a kind space. I don't want anybody to feel bullied or, or pressured in any way. I don't want ugly comments. 
if I said something wrong and you don't agree with, um, that's just how I raise my birds. I have very, I have a very healthy flock. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, we have brooded them in the garage. We have brooded them in our home. We have brooded them in my bathroom. We have brooded them outside in the barn. It just depends on the season. Check your weather. Um, don't rely on your heat lamps and extension cords and things like that and just stick them outside and to not be able to pay attention to them and things like that. So I hope that this helped. I hope that this was everything that you needed to know. Um, I hope you enjoyed this content. And um, yes, please ask all the questions. And and if you have any other like overwhelming questions, then I'll get to it in another video. I know that I do want to make um, one for the older chicken setup. So that's it. See y'all later and God bless. And happy chicken journeys to you.